It's time to make your great escape And heaven knows you need a break Forget your duties, forget your cares It's good to get away When you talk about fishing lures, there's spoons and spinners and then there's plugs. And, and as far as the history of them goes, spoons and spinners were not invented in the United States. They were in use in England and Scotland along with flies and fly fishing in the early 1800s. But one thing that is uniquely American is the fishing plug. And the legend says that one day James Hedden was out at the mill pond south of town waiting for a friend and the friend was late and he was sitting there and he was whittling and just enjoying a beautiful, beautiful morning next to a stream and a nice looking lake and when his friend's horse and buggy rolled into view he was ready to meet his friend and he took his plug of wood that he was whittling on and he threw it into the pond and that's when a great big fish struck at it and as the story goes, a light bulb went off over his head and he thought, well, what if I carved a smaller plug and put hooks on it and fished with it? And that is one version of how the American fishing lure industry got started. So Hedden has this idea, after throwing the plug of wood in the water and watching a fish hit it, that maybe there's a way to attach hooks to a plug of wood and catch fish without even using bait. And this was an era when fishing was mostly sustenance. It was a poor man's way to get a cheap dinner. And usually people fish with bait or spoons and spinners at the most. So he took his idea and the first few lures that he made were hand carved. A lot of them were shaped like frogs and he would give them to friends to fish with and they definitely caught fish. And as word got around, as the legend goes, more and more people wanted these wooden lures and, and Hedden thought, well, maybe I'll just try to manufacture them, market them commercially. And about 1900, 1901, 1902, he set out to create a fishing lure company based in Dowagiac. And the first production lure that was made and commercially sold, they were built in the Hedden basement uh, and painted there. And they were sold in, in tiny white pasteboard boxes that had a picture of the lure on the front. But it was the 200 surface lure, and we collectors refer to it as the slope nose. And it was a fairly simple thing, um, but it was a fish catcher. It had a blue head, a painted red collar, and a white body. And many years later, somebody had asked one of the Hedden children why all of the lures of that time had a blue head. And, and the response was that as they went through the water, blue was the color of the sky and they, thought, they hoped that the head would be invisible to fish and they would strike just behind it and hit that red collar or the white body. And indeed, that's what happened. And Hedden ramped up his production in 1903, 1904, 1905 and, and jumped on the bandwagon with the others and started selling uh, what became known as the, the, the wooden minnows. And this is an example of one from about 1906, 1907. And they were beautiful things. They were, some of them had five, six coats of lacquer, varnish and primer. They had glass eyes, nickel plated propellers and shaped bodies. And one of the things that I've always thought was beautiful is that they had hand painted gills that the ladies in the factory would, would apply uh, as one of the last steps before varnish was added. And they would be placed in, in wooden boxes with pamphlets and, and sold for around a dollar, which was a lot of money back then, but the lures still sold quite well. Um, the, the, the fishing lures were not for poor folks. They were for well-to-do gentlemen that wanted to, to pursue fishing as a recreational sport. By the 1920s, um, Hedden had become a giant tackle maker, probably, if not the leader, one of the top two or three tackle companies in the world. And recreational fishing was growing. It's not as, wasn't as big as it is today, but it was certainly well on its way. And the Hedden lures evolved like all the others and were still some of the prettiest. And here's a couple of the baits that the Heddens were selling in the 20s. And by this time, James Hedden had passed away, and his two sons, Charles and Will Hedden, were running the company still out of Dowagiac, Michigan. But here's some of the lures that were being marketed around 1920, 1922. One of them is the Tad Poly, and it's a beautiful glass-eyed bait, and it pulls from behind, it dives. And this color is one of Hedden's, 
I guess, most popular colors, and it was called perch. And we collectors call it bar perch because there's no scale finish in it. It's just the bars of a blended of orange and yellow and brown. And the minnows were beginning to get a little bit smaller as tackle and reels and lines were able to cast smaller lures farther when they didn't have to be as heavy. And this lure is called a number 20 baby Dowagiac, and it's a little wooden bait. And a lot of people think these are topwater plugs, but uh, believe it or not, that is an underwater lure. It actually has lead weights that were countersunk into the wooden body and then covered over with primer and paint before it was you know, sent off and sold. Hedden continued to be a major player in the recreational fishing tackle industry all the way into the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and even into the 60s. Uh, the family was involved in the business for a long, long time. And even today, uh, the Hedden name is still in existence. It's a uh, trademark and lures are being sold under that name uh, by Pradco, a company over in Alabama and Arkansas. And Hedden wasn't necessarily the first company, but it was probably the first company to really pursue American fishing plugs as an industry. I hope you enjoyed today's show and our, our segment on lures. And if you liked what you saw, be sure to check us out on YouTube and subscribe if you'd like to be advised when new videos come out. And, and also please check us out on AugustaChronicle.com.